Now, the meaning of carnal Christians or carnal believers who are serving God, and we have so many of this and many churches today in the four corners of the world. These are believers denoting a sinful, sinful lifestyle. Number one, not spiritual. Number two, they live like the people out there worldly. Number three, they enjoy the passions and appetites of the physical body, the inclinations of the five faculties of body. They want to please the five appetites of the human body. And their sensual people live according to what the five faculties dictates them to do. Eyes and ears and taste, whatever is doing, I want to do the same thing. So now Paul says, who will rescue me from this life dominated by sin? And verse 25 in the last part of chapter 7 is the answer. Paul said, thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our failures in chapter 7, a life of struggle, a life of double standard, a life of sometimes in God, sometimes in sin, sometimes in God, is still knowing the word of God, finally has come to the concluding part, there is hope. That is not good news, and that's not good news in chapter 7, but there is hope. There is a deliverer in chapter 7, verse 25, but thank be to God, Jesus Christ. And the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I want you to listen. The life that we used to live, the life we, where we used to hang out with all our old sinful attitudes, the nature has to be cut off completely or it will become your hang-ups and make your testimony and your witness as believers no power. So Christianity or being Christian to be believers of the Lord our testimony is very important in that it means if I want to become a spiritual Christian, I have to completely cut off my old attitudes, contrary to the attitudes that is heavenward, so I can be an effective witness that I am a follower of Jesus Christ. There are many who are living in two worlds, one for sin and one for God. Okay, sometimes in God, sometimes in the world. Now, in the Philippines, we have the saying, Hindi ka makapagpapamangka sa dolong ilog. Nautang na ako. You cannot paddle your boat into rivers. Okay, hindi talaga pwede. Church, let us grow up and apply the life in chapter 8 that starts in verse 1 and it ends in verse 39. Okay, let's begin now, chapter 8. Let's go. This is exciting. This is the victorious chapter. This is now the sparkling part of diamond. Okay? Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Another translation in King James Version, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, I want you to see the word, there is therefore now. I want you to take note of the word now in the present tense, and the word in the negative, no condemnation, but the meaning is positive, no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Now, the word therefore, as you can say, is a connecting link of the previous chapter. The word therefore refer to the preceding chapter and the word therefore is a word that is connected to the arguments and issues and topics being discussed in connection of chapter 7. So Paul is saying guys as you connect, as I connect chapter 7 and as I now put it together, I want to say victory, chapter 7 is defeat now, chapter 8 is victory. Chapter 8 is a fresh wind that will help the believer to live in a realm of victory in fullness experience of Christian life. This is what we call you are free at last. 
You can fly all you want and you'll enjoy the presence of God. No one is tagging you and pulling you down again because you will understand in chapter 8, you'll be free completely as you yield to the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. In the war of 1861, there was a timid supporter of Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of America. In this David supporter Abraham Lincoln said to the president, Sir, I hope the Lord would be on the side of the Lord because they were from the Lord. Then Lincoln replied, About that, quote, I am not at all concerned, but only that we should be on the side of the Lord. There is what we call the reshift of our position of stand from a double-minded Christian to a firm believer through the help of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 7, we are in a shaky ground. Remember shaky ground? Remember the leaning tower of Pisa? Marshy ground, wet, that's why it's leaning, and eventually it will collapse. Because from the start, they don't know that the land was wet. It is marshy land. And so we can see the shaky foundation, where we came from, a Christian expression attitude, mix mix, not pure, in the way we live, and then people live unpure, as we continue in a life of carnality, a life of selfishness, and a life of defeat. Now, there's therefore now, look at the reshift, the crescendo of music. Now, at the present time, at the present moment, number one, no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Our pitiful condition of chapter 7, a life of defeat, a struggle. I cannot get out of the sin on and off. They come to me. I cannot get out. I am at the end of the rope. I'm almost giving up. In other words, incapable to live a higher level of Christianity in my Christian journey, to become a Christian as a light of the community, but because of Jesus Christ through him, Christ removed, take away the burden in your shoulder, he removed the condemnation, and so what happened, the exposure to condemnation is closed. Condemnation, these are now my believers, they are now in another level of Christianity, they are now learning to live in the spirit. I close the door. Condemnation is closed. It is over. It's done. The whole chapter 8 is a proof to the safety, uh, safety of the believers, the security of each one of us, not only to the present time, to the present troubles of our time, but even to the future. That is security. Listen to the word from the book of Paul, Romans chapter 8. Now just a glimpse of the current events. We know what's happening. You know it by television. See the economic condition of the world. You know Europe is in a shaky ground with all the bankruptcy that is lined up. You know America is not that great anymore. You know, by the hundreds and hundreds of thousands are unemployed and many things. And I m mentioned to you last time uh, in Delano, uh, there's a place there uh, in California. They're fighting bankruptcy. It's stuck in California, close to Sacramento. And now it's coming to election in the month of November for the president. America is not get, doing better. Asia will be greatly affected. China in 19, uh, 2008, because of <clears throat> the money that they released, about 620 plus billion dollars that stabled a little bit the economy. Today, China is slowing down. That will create a domino effect to the whole world. Now, if this will happen, there's a worldwide chaos, trouble, and people will do everything to fight their governments just to survive. So that's happening today. Eventually, it's happening now. It's still in the process. So economic condition is not that good. Listen to this. It is going to happen. 
see the many hundreds and hundreds of people coming to Australia from Asia, from Sri Lanka, from Indonesia, and the effect of that coming being funded by the government and the effect of that by millions and millions of dollars to the people living in Australia. And we know Australian people, that includes you and me, the, the, the employment is becoming scarce, very hard, and it's being transferred to other countries. We thank God many of you are still in a full-time work. If, if I pray that it would happen, that it will cut to four days or three days. Something is happening because of the influx of people from different countries to find a good life in the country of Australia because the door is widely open. Look at the Wollongong churches today in the last days. Now Timothy chapter 3 verse 1, in the last days, per perilous days shall come. Three things you can see in the last days is happening today. That's why we need the security assurance of chapter 8 regardless of what's going to happen when you understand to live a spiritual Christian you will not be shaken and the last day people will be lovers of themselves number one sin self-centeredness people they love themselves number two people in the last day lovers of pleasures good time everything God oh, maybe when I'm sick when I have a problem lovers of pleasures and then the Bible says in the last days people they are lovers of money. Money now is a big almighty dollar in many countries of the world. They will not serve God as long as they have money. But if they don't have money, they don't want, you know, money become the God of the majority. Now these events are happening before us. It is not good news. But listen, here is the good news to all of us. With the bad things that are <coughs> escalating before you and before me, and everything combined together, listen to the word, nothing shall ever separate you or us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ, chapter 8, verse 1, through Jesus Christ our Lord, it ends through Jesus Christ our Lord. It starts in Christ, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in chapter, at verse 39. So, Nothing can separate us. That is the security. Please don't depend on the security of our income, of our investment, of our good health. Everything is unpredictable. Everything is shaky. Everything, you cannot pin your hope on that, your life and your family. It might, it must be in the promises of chapter 8, living in the spiritual realm where Christ will guide you into all truth. Uh, so, the first reason why condemnation is void in no effect. You are not condemned. We are in Christ. We are in Christ. What a wonderful word of Paul. In what sense, you might ask. Now, in Romans 5.15, Adam brought death to all men. Now, the federal head, Jesus Christ, for those of you and us are believers, is the head of life who are have no life and he is also forgiveness now jesus christ brought forgiveness to many through god's bountiful gift it is like a fountain of water that continue flowing so that so condemnation is void we thank god forgiveness and life is flowing inside of you romans 5 18 Adam lead the people of Israel up to our time to condemnation. 5.8 it says, Christ's one act of righteousness makes all people right in God's sight and give us life. Wonderful God. David, in the book of Psalms 32 verse 1 to verse 3, Blessed or happy is the man whose iniquities is forgiven and our sin is covered. Yes, joy for those, those record the Lord has cleared or their sins are covered. And so Christ, the paternal, the, the head, the paternal head, give us life, forgiveness, and all our sins are covered. Condemnation to hell or destruction is closed. We are alive in Jesus Christ. That's a good news. Number two, the life in Christ flow to us. John 51 to verse 7. This is John, 
John 2, book of John 51. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I spoken unto you. Remain, look up the word, remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit, good attitude, good character traits, unless you remain or continue in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from you, me. You can do nothing. Assurance number two, there, there's no condemnation. The life of Christ flow through us. Why? The branch is connected to the vine. We are the branch. It is fresh every day, and that's the reason why our relationship with God is not only once a week or during Bible study, it is fresh every day. It is connected. Christians are connected to Jesus Christ daily. Daily. So, <clears throat> the head, Jesus Christ, in 1 Corinthians 2, 27, the Bible says, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. You can see where the body of Christ in Jesus is the head. And we can see that every member of the body of Christ, Christ is the head, is in a vital union with Jesus Christ. In other words, there is no way for me to become green and producing godly character and good attitudes in my relationship to you unless I am connected with the head and my relationship to you will continue to flourish because of the wonderful grace of God flowing in my life and in your life. So we have wonderful unity, harmony, and love for one another. And then another thing is we are in Him who are in Christ. We are in Him. In other words, it is a life dependent on God and consistently. I want you to see, to see the Ephesians 3.17. These are very wonderful words. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, Okay, it is in love. Our roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. In other words, I need that love every day. And that love will continue to grow because the love of God cannot even be contained by the whole vast universe. You cannot even know the depth, the length, the width of the love of God. The vast universe, starry heavens, and then the earth, and under the earth, they cannot contain the love of God. And so the love of God flows through you. In Ephesians 3.17, I make this analogy. <clears throat> You're like trees planted along the river bank. <clears throat> now you can see in the barrio, you can see the trees planted beside the the, the creek or the, the river, they bear fruit <coughs> every season without fail. Their leaves are green and you can see it does not weather. <coughs> and I want you to see the result. In security in Christ, condemnation is history never to be remembered again. You know, there is a place where the California, aside from the vast resources of water, California is depending a great amount of water from Colorado. There are through a big, big passage and being distributed in Delano to the great plantation during the time the food being harvested in Delano, California is stuck in this area, can supply the hungry people of the world. Now, that water that is flowing from Colorado to California, as you can see, will supply what is needed. 
Now there's a song in conjunction with this because that's the love of God. The roots go down deep beside the river, beside the water. We need the water of life, the Holy Spirit. Out of your belly, in the last day, Jesus stood and cried. If anyone thirsts, let them come to me. And the Bible says, let them come to me freely. Because out of his innermost being, out of his belly, 739 of the book of John, shall flow rivers, not only singular, but rivers of living water. That's what, that's the reason why chapter 8, as the water is given freely to the Holy Spirit, we need to accommodate, accumulate more. And I tell you, you'll never be trying. You'll not be discouraged. You'll not be grumpy and quit about church and anything. You're always green and produce fruit because you are filled with the water of life by the Holy Spirit of God. There's a song, there is a river that flows from deep within. There's a fountain, okay? And there's a song that says, There is a river that flows from deep within. There is a fountain that pulls the sin from, uh, that pulls the, uh, whatever, the, uh, the crime of sin. Come to the water. There is the vast supply. There is a river, I love this, that never shall run dry. When you have that relationship with the great, wonderful God, you will never be dry in your Christian walk. You will not be discouraged. There is no point of quitting. There is no point of, I think this is alternative to something. The old nature has been cut off. New life has come. Second reason why condemnation has no effect. It is a renewed or transformed life. Our godly attitude Okay, there's therefore now no, no condemnation for in Christ Jesus, who walked not after the flesh, take note of the reshifting, but after the guidance, the leading, the power, and the <coughs> influence of the third person, the Holy 